Welcome friends, I am Dr. Pallavi Kaul and today we are going to know more about one of the esteemed educational organization of India and that is National Council of Educational Research and Training. Under Article 51A of the Indian Constitution, one of the fundamental duties of every citizen of India is to strive towards excellence in all spheres of individual and collective activity so that the nation constantly rises to higher and higher levels of endeavor and achievement. To achieve excellence in the various dimensions of elementary education, the Ministry of Human Resource and Development, Government of India has decentralized the responsibility for qualitative improvement of elementary education in the country. Before we proceed further, let us have a look at the following figure which gives a picture of the various organizations working in the field of elementary education. If we look at the figure, it represents the organizational structure of elementary education at various levels. At national level, we have got NCERT. At the state level, we have got SCERT, that is the State Council for Educational Research and Training. And another organization working at the same level is SIEMET. At the district level, we have three organizations working. The first one is DIET that is the District Institute of Education and Training. The second one is BRC that is a Block Resource Committee. Now these main administrative institutions that provide academic and resource support to elementary education at all the levels in India. From 1954 onwards a number of institutions were started in India such as the Central Bureau of Textbook Research which started in 1954. Another organization that is the Institute of Educational and Vocational Guidance in 1954 again. National Institute of Basic Education in 1956. National Foundation Education Center in 1956. Another organization which started in 1959 was all India Council for Secondary Education. In 1959, National Institute of Audiovisual Education also started and the National Institute of Basic Education. All these institutions were engaged for different functions and were looking at different aspects of elementary education. But in 1961, these seven institutions were brought under a national institution which enjoyed a greater resource of personnel and expertise and larger autonomy of operation. These institutes were collected in a single esteemed organization and that is NCERT, that is the National Council of Educational Research and Training which was established on September 1st 1961 and it is situated at Sri Aurobindo Marg, New Delhi. This uh, the figure on your screen uh, shows the symbol of NCRT. Uh, these are the three uh, swines which are intertwined. Now let us know more about this symbol. The design of the NCRT logo is taken from a Shokan period relic of the 3rd century BCE which was found in the excavation near Maske in Raichur district Karnataka. The motto has been taken from the Isha Upanishad and means life eternal through learning. The three intertwined hansas symbolize the integration of three aspects of the work and the function of NCRT. The first one is the research and development. This research and development has been taken by NCRT at various level and for various uh, people. For example, the research and development for teachers, for teacher education, the resource persons. Even 
uh, the training is being done for these people and the extension services is given to the various organizations. Let us know more about the objectives for setting up the NCRT Council. The first objective is to promote and conduct educational research, experimentation of innovative ideas and practices. The second objective is to develop national curriculum framework that is the NCF 2005 uh, now it is uh, in the process of developing the latest national curriculum framework and the syllabi and the textbook accordingly, the teaching learning material and kits, training modules and strategies, audio video and ICT materials. Another objective of NCERT is training of pre-service and in-service teacher educators and education at national and state level and their functionaries. The fourth objective is to collaborate with state, national and international organizations. It has following four aims. First is to improve the quality of school education. It even organizes the training programs as we have already discussed before for the teachers at the school level, for the teacher educators and even for the resource persons. It also helps in the widespread of education through various the efforts taken by NCERT. It also helps to solve educational problems faced by school education in the country. There are various bodies to help in carrying out the function of NCRTs. Let us know what are these bodies and which are these bodies. These bodies are the National Institute of Education that is NIE which is situated at New Delhi, the Central Institution of Educational Technology also known as CIET which is also in the premises of NCRT New Delhi, third is Pandit Sundaral Sharma Central Institute of Vocational Education PSSCIVE situated at Bhopal. Besides these, we have also got Regional Institutes of Education also known as RIE located at Ajmer, Bhopal, Bhagneshwar, Mysore and Shillong which are represented by the Education Minister of the States and the Union Territories. The main governing body of the NCRT is its executive committee. The Union Minister of Human Resource Development is the president of the general body of NCRT which is represented by the education minister of all the states and union territories of India. The chairperson of the UGC that is the University Grant Commission is also the member of this council. The secretary to the government of India, Ministry of Human Resource Development, Department of Education is another member of this council. The four vice chancellors of the universities run from each region that is the north, south, east and west are the members of this council. The chairman of the central board of secondary education is another member. The commissioner of the Kendra Vidyalaya Sangatan, director central health education bureau, director of training, director general of training and employment. Ministry of Labor, one representative of the Education Division, Planning Commission, all the members of the Executive Committee of the Council, six members nominated by the Government of India, not less than four of them shall be the school teacher and finally the convener is the Secretary NCERT. Now let us know about the Program Advisory Committee. The Program Advisory Committee is the principal advisory committee of the NCRT. The main function of this committee are threefold. The first one is dealing with research schemes submitted to the council by the other organizations or institutions. The second one deals with planning and coordinating educational studies and research with National Institute of Education. So any researches taking place at the other NIEs are being planned and coordinated by NCERT Advisory Council.
Now third one is dealing with the extension and the field services. So any kind of field survey which the government require is done by the NCRT extension services. Now let us come to know about the role of NCRT. The main role of NCRT are as follows. The first one is implementation of national curriculum framework. As we know the national curriculum framework is a framework according to which all the books are prescribed in our country. So that is the main focus of NCERT. The second is universalization of elementary education. So one of the objective of the UEE under it is which is coming under Sarf Shiksha Abhyan is being promoted by NCERT. The vocational education and education of the group with special needs is also being NCRT plays a very important role in the education of special need children. The ECCE that is the early childhood education is also promoted by NCERT. Bringing evaluation and examination reforms is one of the key role of NCERT. Information technology education is another uh, role of uh, play in this also NCRT plays an important role and promoting value education and educational technology is another role of NCRT. Development of auxiliary textbooks, workbooks, teacher guide, supplementary reading material is the function of this of various departments of NCERT. The production of teaching learning material, the online textbook which are also be uh, can be downloaded from the e Parchala website which is available on the NCRT website is one of the important role of NCRT and because of which all the students and all those children who are uh, not able to get the printed format of books can directly get the link from the NCRT website e Parchala and they can read and go through the books. Education of the girl child, identification and nurturing of talent through various national talent search uh, is another role of NCRT, guidance and counseling and improvement in teacher education and promoting international relations is, are the various other roles of NCERT. Now let us know and discuss the functions of NCERT. Uh, before we go and start discussing about these functions, we should have a look at this figure. The various functions of NCRT are research, training, development, pre-service, in-service training, orientation, studies, investigation and surveys, policy implementation, different fields, advice, dissemination. So uh, let us now discuss each of these functions one by one. Let us start with research. The NCRT organizes educational research independently and in collaboration with other organization also. It organizes courses for educational research workers and offers research fellowships to encourage studies in school education. The assistant is given to scholars for publication of their PhD thesis. NCRT promote researches not only the researches done in RIE but it even promotes researches done in the other organizations for example Jamia and many other organizations and other national universities. So let us know about the training function of NCRT. It organizes pre-service and in-service training of teachers at various levels. The pre-primary, elementary, secondary, higher secondary and not only these but at the teacher education also. The resource persons are also trained by NCERT. These trainings are provided in various areas such as vocational education, educational technology, guidance and counseling, special education, value education, art and craft education. Now the upcoming field is yoga education which our Prime Minister is very much interested in. Development. It develops and updates curricula and instruction material syllabi for various levels of 
school education and makes them relevant to the emerging needs of society. For this, we have already seen the role of NCRT in developing the national curriculum framework. Presently, we are in the process of developing a new national curriculum framework and accordingly, in according to this, the, there will be definitely changes in the instructional material and the syllabus of the school at various levels. It develops educational technology including educational aids and evaluation procedures and techniques. These development activities are also to undertaken in the domain of educational technology, population education and education of the disabled and the special group. Pre-service and in-service training is another forte of NCERT. It organizes pre-service program for eligible candidate and in-service teacher education program to teacher and teacher educators and other functionaries associated with teacher education and other education sectors also. Orientation. It even provides orientations to those concerned with school education and teacher education regarding new educational thoughts, ideologies and information in all the subjects. These orientations are not only related and relevant only to the teachers, it, these orientations are also given to the administrators, the principals and uh, the other uh, stakeholders in the field of school education. Dissemination it disseminates information as well as research findings about the improvised educational techniques and methods. Advice. This is one of the very important function of NCRT. It advises the center and the state government on school education and teacher education. Another important function of policy is the policy implementation. Uh, the Ministry of Human Resource Development seeks the expertise of NCRT in formulating and implementing policies and programs in the field of school education, especially to bring about qualitative changes in school education and same changes should definitely percolate from the teacher preparation. So, some changes are also being advised by NCRT deals with problems in different fields like curriculum, textbook, publication, examination, value education, art and craft education, science education and even problems associated with educational psychology and even evaluation and measurement and undertakes uh, researches in these fields with a view to improve the quality of education at all the schools level. It plays a very important role and has a very important function to play at the international level. NCRT coordinates with international agencies working in the field of school education. The international agencies such as UNESCO, UNICEF, World Bank etc. are working with NCRT on various projects. So friends, today we learned about the organizational structure of NCRT. We examine the role of NCRT and we describe the fu function of NCRT. So, in a, we, we will meet you in our next lecture. Till then, keep learning. Goodbye.